Hello, everyone. Hopefully everybody's doing all right this week. Um, for lab four, we're going to be covering mapping, coordinate systems, and digital mapping. We'll start off with a brief PowerPoint over some of the main concepts. Then we'll go take a look at the actual lab materials. And finally, we'll very briefly touch on a th few things you'll be doing in Google Earth Pro this week. All right, let's switch over to that PowerPoint. So again, maps, coordinate systems, and digital mapping. The first thing we're gonna talk about a little bit is map scales. So there are three main types of map scales, graphical scales, verbal scales, and ratio scales. A graphical scale is sort of like this over here that you see on this map. Um, it's a bar that denotes distance uh, and how that compares to distance in the real world in a graphical way. A verbal scale is written in words. It's something like one inch to the mile. And then a ratio scale, which is what we'll mostly be working with, um, is sort of a, a number denotation like you see here, one to 250,000 or here, one to 27,000. Um, and it's really important to note with ratio scales that if the units aren't the same, they need to be converted to match. So with, for example, with this one to 250,000 scale, you could say that that's one centimeter to 250,000 centimeters, or that one centimeter on the map is equal to 250,000 centimeters in the in real world, um, which would be 2.5 kilometers. Or you could say that one inch is the equivalent of 250,000 um, inches in the real world. But because of the way conversions of metrics work, in that, for that scale, one inch would not be 2.5 miles. Um, it would be about 3.95 because of the conversion from inches to miles. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about ratio scales. Those scales apply to single units and then need to be converted to your units of interest for the real world. Um, quickly, we're gonna think about large scale versus small scale maps. This is another important concept from this lab. Um, and mostly we'll talk about it in terms of ratio scales. So if we think back to that ratio scale of one to 250,000, the denominator there or 250,000 is called the scale factor. And with maps, large scale factors uh, result in small scale maps. So you can see how that plays out in this image over here to the left. For example, you see here a one to 250,000 map where this body of water is very small. So this would be a very small scale map, um, which can be kind of a hard thing to wrap your mind around those terms because it's a large map covering a large area, but the scale of the features on the map itself are small. And then you can see as that scale factor uh, becomes smaller, the, um, the map itself becomes larger scaled. So in this final one, one to 24,000, you have the smallest scale factor, but you have the largest scale map. And you can see that because this body of water looks significantly larger on there. Um, the second main concept from this week are, is grid systems. So you've probably heard about it before. You've maybe covered it in, la in lecture already, but latitude and longitude, latitudes run horizontal, longitudes run vertically, um, for this lab, it's important to remember that latitudes run parallel to each other and they do not converge. Um, and it's important to note that for longitudes, uh, well, for latitude, zero degrees is at the equator, but for longitudes, it's at the prime meridian and the prime meridian runs through Greenwich, England. One specific grid system we'll be talking about this week, and you'll be reading about more in the actual lab materials is the Universal Transverse Mercator Grid, or UTM. Uh, you can see a sort of example of the world broken up into UTM grid zones over here on the right. Um, UTM divides the Earth into 60 of these grid zones. Then each grid zone is divided into north-south bands. Um, and then the way you actually find location with, in UTM is by a UTM zone designator and an easting and northing planar coordinate pair for that given zone. And we'll go over that a little bit now. 
So what that means, uh, Eastings are these sort of um, vertical, they're essentially longitudes within the UTM. Um, you have for each grid zone, a central meridian, uh, which is always located at the Easting value of 500,000. So you can see that sort of in this example here, for this specific grid zone, your central meridian is here at 500,000. And then you have um, increasing uh, values to the east, decreasing values to the west. Uh, that's important to remember. Um, and so that gives you your sort of longitudinal equivalent of a location. And then northings give you your north-south uh, equivalent. And these are um, described by distance from the equator. So if you're going north from the equator, uh, those values increase from zero. And if you're going south from the equator, those values decrease from 10 million. And just as an example of what uh, UTM location might look like, um, here's an approximate location for the Calcutt Social Science Building, which is 17S as the sort of UTM grid zone, 497,600 meters east as your easting uh, value, and 3,761,725 meters north as your northing value. So you can see that this is compared to our specific grid zones, um, 500,000 east central meridian. And you can see that this value is compared to the equator starting from zero. Those are the main um, sort of conceptual ideas that we'll be covering in lab. Make sure to still read the lab materials uh, because it goes into a little more depth about this. And of course, if you have any questions, reach out to me or come to my office hours. Now let's switch over and look at the lab itself. One second. All right. There we go, that should have worked. Um, so here you can see the lab. Make sure to read through the background. It'll go over, over a lot of the concepts I just talked about, but in more depth. Um, and you'll wanna get a better grasp of those probably. And then for the actual materials today, there's lab activity one, which is again, sort of a conceptual exercise. You'll go over some, some math questions, some sort of um, conceptual ideas that are covered in that background to make sure that you understand how those play out in semi real world examples um, so that you can then start thinking about these sort of processes when you're looking at things in this lab, future labs, and in lecture. Uh, the first part of this relates to map scales. The second part relates to coordinate systems, but they're from that material that we just covered. Then the second activity, you're going to take some of these things and apply them in Google Earth Pro and learn a little bit more of the functions of Google Earth Pro. So um, those sorts of steps are going to be, again, getting into Google Earth Pro, looking at coordinate systems and scale, and then doing some routes and terrain mapping. Um, the lab gives very good instructions, so I won't go over everything that you'll be needing to do, but just in case it might be helpful. Uh, when you look at Google Earth Pro here, a lot of the sort of elevation date values it's gonna be asking about are gonna be coming from this bottom right corner. Um, so you can see the eye altitude, the elevation of what you're hovering over, um, the latitude and longitude, depending on what metrics you're using and what units. And then a lot of times there'll be a date value here. So when you go into a street view, for example, you can see that the imagery date here, which is when it was pulled from. Um, and then the other thing that you're going to be using for the lab primarily, other than zooming in and out, uh, is going to be the ruler function up here. One moment. So you can see the ruler here um, and you can click show it. Uh, if you wanna draw a line between two points, you can put two points down like this. It shows the distance between those points. 
And uh, the other function you're going to be using of this is the path tool, uh, which you can also show an elevation profile with. So if I put one point here and left click, and then another point here, another point here, here, see you can start to put together a path and you can see how elevation changes across that path and at different points. Uh, you're going to be using this tool during the lab as well. Um, that's just very briefly where you find some of those parts. The lab describes it as two, so um, don't feel lost if you didn't, don't remember any of those points here. Um, and if while you're doing the lab, of course, you have any questions, you have any issues, uh, just email me, come to my office hours, um, and let me know. And then finally, um, for this week's lab, we're back to the normal um, standard that we've been doing before of having a quiz. So there won't be an assignment to turn in this week. You'll be taking a quiz again on some of the concepts from this lab and some of the activities. You'll probably want to write down your answers again um, because some questions will at least look familiar to some of the questions asked in the lab. And make sure to get that quiz in by 11.59 p.m. this coming Sunday, as always. Um, and as always, if you have any questions, you want any help, please drop into my office hours, please email me, uh, and hopefully you all have a great week. Thank you so much.